Would you please join me in taking out your cell phones for a moment? Please turn on your flashlight and raise it high with the light pointing in my direction. Higher, all the way up. That's right. Now would you be so kind to lightly sway it in the air? Wow, what a beautiful sight. I wish you could see this from where I'm stand standing. What a simple way of how a group could work together to create such a fun effect. Thank you, you can put your phones away now. I would like you to take a moment to think about the power, the power in our hands, the total combined power of this group. You know, I believe we have just grown too accustomed to this power, that we panic whenever we forget it or can't find it. But did you know that the current toasters have more computing power than that used in the first moon landing? And now think of how that compares to your phone. Some say the current iPhone is almost a million times more powerful than that used in the moon landing. However, technology is not the future. People are the future. And here today, you're getting a look at the future. It is young kids like us who will be building that future. But do you know what the most important thing will be in the future? To learn to code. And I am committed to seeing each and every child in the world learn computer coding so they can be a part of creating a better future. So how exactly did I get into coding? Well, one day when my dad did a prank on me, he showed me something on his computer where there was a button and next to it, there was a little command which said, press this if you're beautiful. So when I gave it a try and the mouse pointer touched the you are beautiful command, it disappeared. So I was a little confused. I was like, how did you do that? Am I not beautiful? What's going on here? So he told me he used something called coding to create that, and it got me really involved in it. Even though I had no clue what it was, I wanted to learn it, because I wanted to prank my friends in the similar way. And at the same time, I always loved board games. But I thought, if I can't bring a physical board game onto a computer coding screen, why not bring the computer coding onto a board game? And when I presented this idea to my parents, they were like, um, okay, why don't you do some research about it? And I thought that was a nice way of saying no. But, but I actually did want to do some research about it to prove to them I could create such things. So I did research and I found out that creating a board game involved creating rough sketches, um, prototyping, getting contact with graphic designers, play testing, and eventually getting into mass production. Now this time, when I told this to my parents, they're like, okay, you really know what you're talking about. They supported me, and from there I created hundreds of prototypes, uh, various different types, until Coder Bunnies, the most comprehensive coding board game ever was created. And from there, I had a few prototypes in hand. I was playing with people like my brother and some of my friends, and I thought, wow, this is really cool. I enjoy teaching kids about something I'm good at. Um, and then when I told this to my mom, she was like, okay, um, why don't you do something called workshops? And as a seven-year-old kid, I thought workshops were things where you go to places like Home Depot and you build things out of wood. Now, even though this was correct, um, the workshops my mom was talking about was where you teach kids about something you're good at. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach kids about something I'm good at, which is coding, and in a fun way, using a board game. And so from there, we went to a few libraries, a few libraries that were close by. And they were like, um, we already have online coding programs, or why don't you come back next year? And as few, a few more libraries started telling me that, I started thinking, is my game really that good? But I didn't give up. I went to a few more libraries until eventually, one of the biggest libraries here in the Bay Area, the Santa Clara Central Park Library, they loved the idea. They wanted to do workshops right away. From there, I've done hundreds of workshops, teaching thousands of, uh, th thousands of kids how to code. I've done it at places like libraries, schools, tech events, communities, and big corporations like Google, Microsoft, Intel, Facebook, and others. And as I started doing more and more workshops, more and more people started asking me where they could buy the game. 
I had no clue. I mean, I was just doing this for fun. I had like five prototypes in hand, and I was just doing this out of my own passion. And when I told people that, they were like, oh, that's a bummer. I would really like to buy this for my kid, or I think uh, he or she could really benefit from it. And as uh, more, and more, library, uh, more and more people started telling me that, I thought, maybe it's time to get into mass production. So from there, about a year later, we were on Amazon, and before I knew it, it trended number one out of all of the board games there. This made me feel maybe my game is doing good for the world, and it just motivated, motivated me to keep on working harder. And as I was going and growing in this process, I learned that there are very few girls in the tech and computer science field. I always used to look at these posters, and they always showed pictures of boys in the uh, robotics or coding club, and then just take the girls' toy aisle. I mean, it's all uh, dolls and princes princesses. Where are the boys in the posters, and where are the robotics and STEM and coding tools in these uh, toy aisles? And I did some research, and I found out that girls and women are only represented 20%, while men and boys are represented 80 and this is not an equal tech world. It is my goal to bring more and more girls into tech, you know, to create a more equal place. And to actually do that, I've been doing workshops, teaching kids about my game, girls only workshops, so more and more girls can get into tech. And, you know, I mean, just one kid benefits from that workshops, I believe it makes a great impact. Because if one kid joins their school coding club, then all of her friends will join, and all of her friends will join after seeing how many cool things you can create with the power of tech. I'm fortunate enough to also receive national and international recognition, and as I was covered by things like the Time Magazine, the Today Show, uh, more and more people started also telling me how much impact my game can make in the world. And that leads to my mission, Yes, one billion kids can code. With the Yes, one billion kids can code, it is my goal. <laughs> it is my goal that by the time I go to college, I want to help all the one billion kids in the world gain access to STEM, computer science, and coding tools. Um, and I know that not all of these students will choose to become professional coders when they grow but I want them to become better thinkers, leaders, and creators of this next generation. And I didn't stop there. Now the world is moving towards artificial intelligence. And most people don't even know what it is, but they've been hearing a lot about it. So um, after I encountered this similar sort of experience, I decided to create the world's first ever artificial intelligence board game, Coder Minds. I would say my journey has only begun, but I've already learned a lot. Some of which include, uh, that mainly stood out to me actually, were one, follow your imaginations, not other people's limitations. People will say you can do this, but you can't do that. They will set up limitations for you in life. But I believe only listen to your mentors, the people who guide you. Listen to your imaginations, and that is what will take you far. And another thing is time expands to accommodate your passions and priorities. Um, a lot of people ask me how I, ban it, uh, how I manage with school, homework, extracurricular activities, and on top of all that, running a business. Well, I love everything I do, and I believe that if I really love it, then time will expand to fit in all of my um, passions, all of my priorities. But how does this have to do with you being here today? Well, as I said, my generation is the future, but we will need your help. We need you to guide us, mentor us, to shape us. We need you to provide us with the tools and opportunities to reach for the stars. Today, many kids are users of things like social media, things on the internet, uh, games, but we w I want you to encourage them to not only become consumers of these things, but to become producers of this. But will you take the first step Reach out to one kid you know and find out how you can be assistance to them. Ask. We all kids can always benefit from your time and experience. I would like to see everyone here get alongside 
one young future maker. You can build their future. You can create a greater one. Will you do that? I really hope so. Thank you.